Thank you, Bell Choir. That was amazing. A German Shepherd, a Doberman, and a cat have died and gone to heaven. All three are faced with God who wants to know what they believe in. The German Shepherd says, I believe in discipline, training, and loyalty to my master. Good, says God, then sit on my right-hand side. Doberman, what do you believe in? Well, the Doberman said, I believe in the love, care, and protection of my master. Ah, oh, said God, you may sit on my left. Then he looks at the cat and asks, what do you believe in? The cat answers, I believe you're sitting in my seat. Any cat owner knows what I'm talking about. So our next stop on our Lenten journey on the road to the resurrection is Reformation. Jesus was a reformer. He challenged the status quo and was willing to confront the so-called wisdom of the day and press on towards a world that was more egalitarian in all respects. Likely an older man, Nicodemus, in our text for today, had a wise and curious mind. He was not satisfied with the legalism of the Pharisees. His deep hunger for truth, coupled with the courage to seek the truth from the original source, was his superpower. Essentially, he was a religious hotshot who was snuck out of the house when the neighbors weren't watching just for a nocturnal interview with Jesus, only to be told he must be born again. His story can only be found here in John's Gospel in chapter 3 and then later in the Gospel when Jesus was crucified. He was one of two men who had lowered the corpse from the cross, wrapped it up, and buried it. The text says that he cried when he did this. So you might imagine that this, when this news hit Nicodemus of the resurrection, he must have laughed hysterically. You can hear him say, Jesus told me he would be born again. There, there is another story from the Zen Buddhist tradition from Japan. A man was being chased by a ferocious tiger across the field at the edge of the cliff. At the edge of the field was a cliff. In order to, to escape the jaws of the tiger, the man caught hold of a vine and swung himself over the edge of the cliff. Dangling down, he saw, to his dismay, there were more tigers on the ground below him, waiting for his arrival and roaring at him. He was caught between the two. And to make the situation even worse, two small mice were gnawing on the vine to which he clung. He knew that at any moment he would certainly fall to his death. That is when he noticed a wild strawberry growing on the cliff side. And of course, what else could he do or should he do? Clutching the vine with one hand, he plucked the strawberry with the other and put it in his mouth. He was in heaven. Ah, uh, the story goes and counsels the joy of living in the present moment. Find beauty, energy, sweetness, even in moments of extreme. 
So what did these stories of the ferocious tiger and Nicodemus mean for us in the season of Lent? I have discovered many commentaries offered on this Buddhist story, some more far-fetching than others, but perhaps we can only be empowered when we know the tigers of our lives, how our past has shaped us to who we are, how our future often limits us and prevents us from doing what we are capable of, and where our source of strength and purpose lie. The tiger on the top of the cliff can be seen as the past to which we cannot return. The past reminds us where we came from and who we are. We are shaped by each of those experiences that have made up the product of our lives. Why did Nicodemus cry at the foot of the cross. It is because he remembered what Jesus said to him. The 18th century poet Thomas Graves, responsible for the often quoted phrase, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. We all remember that. Gray's poem, Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eden College, is a romantic poem about returning to a place after years have passed. The poem is divided into two parts. The first half is a cheerful reflection on childhood, and the second half is a dark commentary on adulthood. Nicodemus was reminded of not only what Jesus said to him, but how his words cut deeply into his past. At Clark, I teach a class called Family and Cross-Cultural Perspective. One of the assignments that I've created is called the Who Am I Project. Students spend the entire term developing the story of their lives as it connects to themselves, their families, and the wider culture around them. Students tell me that this assignment is the most meaningful assignment they have ever had in any class ever. There is an empowerment that happens when we develop and reflect on where we have been, on our stories. When I think of Nicodemus, and then I think of most of us at Southminster who, let's face it, are mostly older, we don't need an assignment to reflect on our past. It just happens. I find myself now, now more than ever thinking about my life and the tigers and events that have made and contributed to my personal sense of self. What would my life be if I had not moved 19 times before I was 18 years of age? Or what would it be if I had not been cut from the basketball team during my senior year in high school? Or if I hadn't met Kathy in the most unlikely of circumstances? Or if I hadn't come to Southminster 18 years ago? I remember every stupid and crazy thing I've done. And I ask myself sometimes, who was that guy? I don't recognize him. But instead of being ashamed or filled with regret, the road to resurrection and Lent involve returning to places after years have passed and recognizing the many ways we've been shaped by them and made stronger as a result. 
Perhaps this week in your Lenten journey, perhaps you can take some time to reflect on your story. Perhaps three events that shaped your life and who you are today. The tigers below represent the future with all of its dangers. Aren't we all afraid of the future to some extent? When I graduated from high school, it was a time of change and fear. Back in the 80s, we had to read the George Orwell's book, 1984, which heightens everyone's fear of Big Brother and a passionate dystopian future. It was a time of uncertainty. It was a time of political debate. Back then, like today, news, but good news didn't get the same coverage as bad news. Every day you received a, st a steady stream of sensationalism and scandal, stories with the message that change was not possible. Not so different than today. Today, we long for a time when the news media reports on more than just one noun and one verb, Trump and Trumping. We look forward to a day when our world can look much different than it does now. There are many tigers around us, but Lent calls us to remain steadfast, to, remind, to respond to the tigers below us, the tigers of our future, even when James change seems impossible. So we can avoid those tigers, we can stay where it is safe, or we can live with confidence that the power within us is greater than the power in the ferocious tigers all around us. Jesus was an ultimate reformer. He met with Nicodemus in the silence of that dark night. He knew that Nicodemus was searching for meaning and purpose and that his words would certainly be startling and even shocking to a wise man. He knew that Nicodemus likely had the power to turn him in right then and there, and yet he said those words anyway. He spoke truth to power. He knew that Nicodemus needed to take a stand and use his power and privilege for good. He knew that Nicodemus could be an influential and powerful Reformer, what are you doing to reform the world around you? How are you using your power and privilege for good? Moving on in this story, the mice can be seen as time and the passage of time there is never enough time to do everything we need to get done. We all want more time. So many pesky mice competing for our attention. But Lent invites us to slow down, to create margins, to take time and create space for reflection, Time to discover wholeness and balance. Octavia Rahim is a black author that I found myself reading during this African American History Month. She has written a book entitled Pause, Rest, Be. Stillness Practices for Courage in Times of Change. She writes, rest is the most underrated superpower. She writes, rest is the bridge between where you are and
and where you want to be. She writes, rest and you will remember you are already who you are trying so hard to become. Pause, rest, be. And finally, a question that you've all been waiting for and longing for and having in the story of the ferocious tiger is, what in the world does the strawberry represent? Unfortunately, I cannot answer that for you. The only person that can is you. What keeps you centered? What gives you joy? What gives you purpose? That is your strawberry. Jesus reminds Nicodemus, even in his golden years, that for God so loved the world, that Nicodemus' purpose was not other than to be reformed and always reforming to the purposes of that love, to be born again a not so well saying no or not so well known saying from the upanishads one of the earliest layers of wisdom in the hindu tradition says this that which is whole is joy there is no joy in fractured existence only the whole is joy, and one must desire to understand the whole in order to find joy. As we travel this season of Lent together, may we come to know the whole of our existence and all that is in the world. Even though the whole is not all goodness and light, may we come to know the whole of our lives, including the tigers that can seem to dominate. May they not overwhelm, but strengthen our resolve. For it is the whole that is deeply spiritual. There we can live as if God's love truly has no boundaries. There we can be truly reformed. Amen.